G'day everyone. Today we're just going to do a quick rundown of our battery storage system and also our solar system. Uh, this video isn't intended to be a uh, you know a be-all, end-all uh, guide to solar and battery. It's just to show you what we're running in our van. Uh, we run off-grid pretty much 24-7. Uh, battery does everything we need. And it's stored here underneath the dinette seat. Um, yeah, so this is what our system is and, and this system we've been using now for about three months uh, and it hasn't skipped a beat. We've been really happy with it. So for what that's worth, um, it, everything's worked um, and we're really happy with it. So I want to show it with you guys and, and hopefully give someone else some inspiration and a bit of information and, and get you on the way because this stuff does sometimes come across as being a little bit complicated and difficult but it's actually fairly straightforward provided that you know a few basic things of how it all works so without further ado here is the heart of the system so these are four winston lithium phosphate battery cells and they are connected together in series which creates a single 12 volt battery pack pretty straightforward you can see the little uh, bridges that join between each cell those wires that come off the uh, these like midpoints here and at the end, they go to two different devices. One device in the back, and you might be able to hear that high-pitched sound that comes from the battery balancer. Um, I can't hear that noise usually, but the, I've noticed that the camera microphone does tend to pick it up a little bit, so apologies if it is a bit annoying. Uh, in the back here is the uh, inline shunt, which is connected to the Victron battery monitor, and that gives me a picture of the whole battery and how full it is and how much power is being used. Uh, and on the side, we've got our resettable circuit breakers, which are, you know, connected to the battery going to the distribution board and also to the solar that comes in and the fuse boxes that go out. And this is uh, the earth terminal on the other side here. So it's all pretty standard stuff. This took me about a week to sort of put together. There was a few uh, trials and errors and mistakes made. So probably the main thing that I can say just on this sort of topic is lithium batteries are awesome. Uh, they're probably one of the best options in the market. The only real issue with lithium is that they are quite expensive and they sometimes are difficult to buy a good quality one from a supplier. So some people might really struggle to do it. In Australia, for example, it's very difficult to buy these lithium batteries. There's only a couple of people in the country that sell them and then the shipping kind of blows out costs a little bit. Uh, it was about $1,800 for the battery, the battery monitor and the little battery uh, uh, the cell uh, monitor as well. So it's a bit of money. I could have gone AGM. It would have been a bit cheaper. But on the flip side, lithium batteries are a lot smaller. They're a lot more compact and they weigh less and they fit into this space for us better. So it, it met our needs and it did bend the budget a little bit, but it didn't break it. So it's all good. Um, I think after you spend the money and start using it, you sort of forget about what you've actually spent on it. Another real key element uh, when you're doing your own electrical systems is just be really careful with your cable thickness. Just try and make sure that your cables are the correct thickness uh, based on the current and the distance of the cable. You can work those out using pretty easy cable uh, little uh, online calculators which I'll put in the link of the video in the description. So yeah and same deal with the fuses. Just make sure your fuses and or circuit breakers are um, correctly sized based on the load and again there's calculators that do all that for you there's nothing really complicated uh, just quickly moving up to the cell oh, sorry the battery monitor so this is the Victron battery monitor and that just shows you how full the entire battery is how much is being used how much is being produced and over here we've just got the um, the monitor for each individual cell and that just tells me uh, you know if there's any issues if what the difference of voltage is between them up in the uh, overhead cabinet, we've got our solar charge controller. So the one that I'm using in, in our system here is the uh, the Victron unit, and it's a 150 volt, uh, 35 amp version. They do a couple of different versions depending on what sort of voltage and amperage you need, and, and that depends on the sort of solar system and how many panels and how big the panels are and so forth. So this is 150, 35 is overkill for our system, but I bought it with the intention of having four panels originally and also with the capability of adding more panels in the future. Uh, here connected is just a standard uh, dual pole DC circuit breaker, and that runs from the solar panels, the, uh, the three solar panels on the roof, which are connected together in series. They run down through a cable entry gland, down to the breaker, 
into the uh, solar charge controller and then that goes off converts it to the correct voltage for the battery and then that goes off and charges the battery the little blinking unit in the back there that's the uh, the Victron Bluetooth dongle that's really handy because it allows me to connect my smartphone into the solar charge controller and then I can look at information about how much solar is being produced and I can also change some settings in terms of the output it's not necessary, but uh, I do recommend getting it. If you, if you go down the path of getting a, a Victron solar charge controller, it's worth the, uh, the 20 or $30 for the, uh, for the Bluetooth dongle just to be able to connect it to your phone. Uh, it's a pretty nifty little feature, even if you don't use it all the time. It's, it's there if you ever need to use it in the future. So with that said, probably the main other thing to show you guys now are the solar panels on the roof. I've got the ladder set up, so I'll go and take you up there and give you a squeeze and show you how I've got it set up at the moment. All right, so up here on the roof, as you can see, we've got the three solar panels and uh, they're all carefully laid out between the rooftop uh, vents on the top. Uh, the secret to getting everything laid out properly is to use cardboard templates. So you measure up the size of the solar panels and the side of the fans, make your little uh, cardboard templates and then you can mix and match and play a little game of Tetris on your roof until you find a good compromise. So at the moment we've got the three panels. I used to have a fourth one at the front but it was a little bit too big and it wasn't really bolted down properly and it caught the wind and it blew off. Uh, what we found is that the three panels, so each one of these panels is 120 watt each at 12 volt We found that that is actually more than enough power for our needs anyway So thankfully the fourth panel is just a redundancy uh, and we're pretty happy without it. It's still everything works fine um, After having that panel blowing off though, I was a little bit paranoid about having another one go so in addition to having all these latches on the side which hold the panels down because these are on hinges so I can lift them up and service underneath the panels if I need to. I've also got these uh, ABS plastic uh, wind deflectors here which are bolted to the panel and then connected with silicone to the roof. And up the front here, this is just one of those uh, ABS plastic cable entry glands and that is just stuck onto the roof using double-sided tape and then a layer of uh, a bit of uh, dicol lap sealant over the top just to waterproof it. I also recommend all your cables to have them covered with a little bit of plastic sheath just so none of your cables are exposed directly to the sun because you know even if it's a UV stabilized outdoor grade solar cable uh, the sun will cause it to deteriorate over the next few years and you want to keep it covered as much as possible and run it all underneath the panels. So that's pretty much it here. So 320 watt panels and they comfortably sit on a long wall base sprinter up on the roof and there's a bit of space up the front. This is now a little perch for uh, watching sunsets now. So everything worked out, everything in its place. Um, my main bit of advice is really just to fit as many solar panels up on your roof as you possibly can uh, More the better because it just means more power So some days when you maybe need to run a few extra devices or charge a few things It just means that your, your batteries are going to be charged earlier and then you can have surplus power through the day earlier So there's no harm in putting extra solar panels on your roof except for a couple of bucks But the solar panels are so cheap now uh, There's really no good reason not to chuck as many up as you can fit on the roof so yeah, that's basically it. Um, just be really mindful of the size of your battery. Just make sure it suits your needs. Put as many solar panels as you can on the roof um, and keep it simple and give it a go. Try it out yourself. Don't be afraid of getting your hands dirty and learning about it. Uh, definitely sit down, watch a few YouTube videos, read a few articles, learn how it works. It's better that you do it and that you know how it works so if anything goes wrong, you can fix it up yourself rather than rely on anyone else. Until next time, got a few more videos coming uh, a night tour I'm gonna film hopefully tonight and a couple others as well so stay tuned we've got a few more videos on the way just want to share the love and, and give you guys a bit of information and help you get on this amazing journey and and live off-grid and, and, and explore and enjoy the world so thanks for watching um, and see you next time